Hi, so I did an in-depth video on my chicken coop, my ultimate chicken coop video, and a lot of people were asking from that for a more exhaustive tour of my entire chicken setup. So that is what we're going to do today. So we're back in the chicken courtyard here for a full video on the details of the courtyard and also on the chicken house. See my previous video, my ultimate chicken coop video. But now I'm going to show you the rest of the setup, starting with what I call my big annual room. So these have all got gates, so I can lock the chickens in and out as needed. And this is where I grow my annual crops. So currently they've got my summer annual crops and then this will get changed over to the winter annual crops probably in the next month. So the chickens are locked out of here because as you can imagine, they would absolutely wreak havoc on it. But also, as you can see, this is getting pretty overgrown. The crops are coming to the end of their season you know here's my pumpkin and zucchini i've got some crazy white fly going on so this is almost ready to be all ripped out and started over and when i want that to happen i will open that gate right there those little chickens are going to come running in and they are absolutely going to smash this room they're going to clean up the soil they're going to peck down all these old crops um, any bugs are absolutely going to be annihilated. So they are a brilliant cleanup crew. I'll leave them in here for about two weeks until they've done their job. They'll also be shitting in all the garden beds here, which will provide ample fertilizer for the next season's crops. And once they've kind of done their work, I'll lock them back out and then I will plant my cool season crops. And then at the end of uh, winter or the start of spring I'll let them back in and they'll do exactly the same for the winter crops for a couple of weeks and then they'll get locked out so really the chickens are only in this room for you know max for maybe six weeks of the year which isn't much but it does make a huge difference to the efficiency of my gardening by having them do so much of the work and also you know Having for the rest of the year, having the whole thing wired in is excellent because out here in the country, between birds and kangaroos and all manner of things, um, you know, I wouldn't get that many crops if this was out in the elements. So, you know, no one's going to be eating my tomatoes. It's all, it's all protected. So, I suppose it has the double use of being a safe space for the chickens and then also being protected from uh, not predators but hungry locals that would like a slice of this action and you can see here like my nasturtiums I've let just go completely crazy on the ground and are actually blocking the path if this was just my veggie patch and that's all I used it for I would um, you know rip all this out or at least kind of contain it but because i know that the chickens are coming in here soon and i know how much they love the nasturtium leaves it makes sense just to leave as much greenery as possible because all that greenery is feed for the chickens i will like all the time cut off chunks of this and throw it into the main area of the chicken courtyard where they are now and they'll eat it but you know they're really smart and anything that's still alive and growing and fresh is going to be a lot more appealing to them than something that's a couple of days old so I'd only ever rip up as much as you know they they would eat in that day so that's annual room one so this goes back into the courtyard there's Cindy having a drink hello possum so as I said in the other video, they're always allowed in this courtyard. This is always open to them. But uh, the side rooms get open and closed when needed. So this is the second annual room we're coming to here, which is also, of course, gated. 
Yes, you would love to get in, wouldn't you? <laughs> the chickens know there's fun stuff in here. So this is, again, like the other room, annual crops for the most part that we have a summer flush and a winter flush. I also have my blueberries in here. So it's not entirely annual, but kind of all works together. So you can see here I've got weeds on the ground. I kind of let them be because, as I said, when the chickens come in, they're going to find those weeds really tasty and get it under control for me. So it's less work for me. So again, we'll do a summer crop and a winter crop. This is getting to the end of the summer offering. Got some pumpkins in here. Whether or not they actually get to be sizable enough before it gets too cold, I'm unsure. The sweet pea arch, which is, um, you know, seen better days, but I'm actually letting this go to seed so that it'll self-seed in the garden forevermore because I think it's quite a nice uh, weed to have, so to speak. So any sweet peas that want to voluntarily set up here, I'm happy for. I've also got uh, a blackberry there, a thornless Waldo blackberry, which it gets quite boggy in that spot between these two raised beds. So, you know, it's not that guy isn't hooked up to the main watering system like everything else. Every other garden bed or raised garden bed has the uh, the dripper system here, which I find really effective. Waldo over there is not on the dripper system, but because that area gets boggy, he's really happy there and really fine. So there's a few extra crops I've added in from time to time outside of the original plan just to make use of any excess moisture or, you know, any convenient growing spots. Because like I said before, if he was out outside of Chicken City, he would get a lot of birds being interested in his blackberries, but having him there, you know, protected from the chickens because they're not in here at the moment and also protected from wild birds. Uh, you can see there's a pipe there which the roof of the chicken house has a gutter system and then that water runs off the roof into the gutter down and out of chicken city and i actually have a little makeshift pond i don't know if you're gonna be able to see yeah there's like a half ibc there which is my makeshift pond and i've got um watercress water celery pickle rush a few other things growing out there and it's also just a backup drinking system for the alpacas which roam freely around chicken city the full 360 degrees of it i mean often we see them walking past right outside here but i don't know where the girls are right now so you see i've got some coverings going on here i'm a big fan of horticultural fleece as a uh, crop protectant in summer uh, to keep shade, you know, to shade some seedlings and also to keep moisture in, in winter to keep warm because it gets very cold here. So I find crops grow very happily under the horticultural fleece in both summer and winter for different reasons. Here's my beautiful silver beet patch. If you don't grow much, I would highly recommend growing silver beet. It's just super easy. Again, you've got some more lettuces under the horticultural fleece there. I find lettuces when they're taken out of direct sun and that pelting rain, uh, the leaves are always so much more like soft and buttery and tender. I've also got, so here's a gate to the outside. I actually don't use this gate very often, but I like it because when I'm mucking in and out and doing a lot of work in this room, I can access, I can go in and out of this room without um, going in this gate which is sometimes difficult because the chickens are very keen to get in and they hang around your feet. So by having the two gates um, just gives me a bit more flexibility. I can get a wheelbarrow in here or whatever it is. Uh, I didn't mention that's my grapevine over there. Um, again, it's an annual room, but there are a few fruit crops. Again, I like the idea of having the grapes in here because they're protected from uh, birds, etc., and then in winter, when the chickens are in this room, it's deciduous, so they're not going to be able to do any damage to it. I've also got a few raspberries along the back here, mainly just because, as I said, with the blackberry, there was a little bit of space and quite a bit of moisture was collecting. So let's make the absolute most of it. So that's annual room two 
for the summer veggies and then the winter veggies and the chickens will be allowed in here in between the seasons to do the cleanup and to do the fertilizing. Hi possum. See they're coming to investigate now I've opened this gate they think there might be something fun for them. Okay so over here we have my berry cage and I'm going to do a separate video on this because it's a bit confusing because there's a separate chicken set up here but ignoring the separate chicken set up let's talk about growing berries inside chicken city or inside your chicken enclosure. Here's the residents of this room. So the berry room is another brilliant one to have in the chicken enclosure because by having it covered in like this, the berries are protected from birds, etc. But also they make, like it's a brilliant space to have chickens in because in summer you've got these dense uh, canes that the chickens are really happy shaded underneath. And then in winter, because they're all deciduous, uh, there's not much going on in here and it's a brilliant room for sunshine so it actually works very well with the fact that the chickens need shade in summer but they need sunshine in winter so the only caveat with having chickens in your berry cage or when you're growing berries is they will eat the little shoots that come up when the new canes are forming once the branches are pretty big they can't do that much damage but they will definitely take the little new uh, shoots so what I do is I have this wire here that's around the raspberries there so all the little raspberry shoots that come up are protected and then under the bigger cane berries so this is a tay berry here I've got another I hope you can see this another wired off section so as it shoots up new canes the chickens can't get to it although with my loganberry here which is a monster an absolute monster it sometimes shoots up canes outside of its wired up area but that's actually okay because the chickens keep it under control without the chickens it would actually be too much in this space so it's a really nice balance between giving the chickens something to do um, and letting the plant do its thing, but again, keeping it controlled. So it really works in harmony, the berries and the chickens. I would say, if nothing else, I would have a berry set up in your chicken setup. As I said, I'll do another video on this room just because as you can see, it's got its own residence. Um, who are not part of the main flock but we'll come back to that so berries and chickens excellent setup and in winter I can have any number of chickens in here for the entire of winter and actually I don't need the wire on in winter and I'll often take it off so the chickens can fertilize those beds and also get rid of any weeds in there because in winter all these cane berries are going to be completely dormant Oh, and there's also a beautiful passion fruit on the wall here. So this is a great thing to have in the chicken setup because we've got the walls, we've got the wire that the passion fruit wants to trellis. So might as well make the use of that. And as you can see, I've got plenty of big, beautiful passion fruit. Even if they're not ripe yet, they're on the way. The trick is, and I know this because I've made this mistake before, do not let it get on the roof because it will get out of control it really likes the roof it will ruin the roof you won't be able to harvest any fruit because it's going to be on top of the roof so i do every time i'm here just do a quick scan and any bits of the passion fruit that are heading north um, upwards they get uh, you know either cut off or politely angled back down so this is the berry cage and if you want like a full diagram of this, because I get it's a bit difficult as I'm like walking around showing you, um, on my website, elisealexandra.com, I actually have like a floor plan of this entire area that I drew up when I designed it and when it was being built. So you can access that and you can see the layout of this courtyard and the different rooms 
connected to it. So last room here, which is open at the moment. So my policy is I always want one door open for the chicken. So there's always one room that they've got full access to. Because as much as the courtyard's great, I do think it's a bit small for them all. So I always have one door open and that door rotates. So if I was opening one of the veggie rooms, I would shut the fruit room here. This is the room that you can spend the most time in because they can do the least damage. This has got all my fruit trees in it. Well, not all of them, but a lot of it. My mum's in there doing some pruning at the moment. God love her. So in here we've got... Apples, pears, plums, apricots, cherries, the whole works. It's super overgrown. But I kind of like that because it's shady for the chickens and it's a food forest. You can see like there's heaps of mint here, which luckily I managed to establish big enough before I let the chickens in so that they haven't been able to smash it. There's some tansy down the end. I can't even get through here. Like this is crazy. It's good. It's what I wanted. So it's nice and cool under all these trees for the chickens in this hot weather. They've got ample green crops to peck at should they desire. They can't get to the fruit on the trees because it's up too high. But any fruit that drops, the chickens will happily enjoy. And that manages the fruit fly. I've never had any fruit fly issue in here. And I put that all down to the chickens. So you can see here I've got my beautiful apple tree which I'm actually espaliering kind of along this wall. So that's another advantage of having the different rooms is that dividing wall, like, like with the passion fruit trellis, we can actually grow apples on and, you know, maintain it. And what's really important is we keep them off the roof. So if you're going to do something like this, train your stuff young. I didn't do that and I regret it intensely. So you can see this new apple I've got here is being trained very low very very low because as soon as stuff gets onto this roof it ruins it and it's not practical because as i said you can't get the fruit anyway so keep your fruit trees low these are all dwarf fruit trees but even when you know a dwarf fruit tree says it's going to be two meters given ample water ample fertilizer and um fertilizer in the form of chicken poo they go crazy so recommend um Definitely buy the dwarfs, but it's not as simple as just buying the dwarfs. You actually really need to maintain them to keep them off the roof. Like that plum there, you can see, is uh, pushing friendships. And I would have trimmed it like two weeks ago. So, yeah, this is the main chicken area and it works really well. In winter, these are all deciduous, so they all drop their leaves and then it's quite bare. But again, the chickens like that because then any sunshine they get to really enjoy so this space is quite big and it really like changes the the landscape for the number of chickens I can have in this setup. Last thing I'll say here is there's a dog house here. I keep this here permanently, even though there's no use for it at the moment. Um, anytime I, I get new chickens, they spend a couple of weeks in this room and that's the house that they live in. So I keep them separate from the main girls. I want to check them, make sure they're not sick. Um, often because I adopt chickens that were, you know, in battery egg facilities, etc. Often they're not in good health. They've got lice, they've got scaly, scaly leg mites. So they come into this room to be treated before they get to mix with my flock. And a second benefit of that, aside from the health benefits, is that because of these wire walls, the chickens get to meet each other through the wire, get to know each other before they're actually able to get to each other. And I find that creates a much smoother introduction for both sets of chickens. So it is ideal not just to get new chickens and kind of dump them in with your old ones from a health perspective, but also from a pecking order perspective. I mean, you can imagine if someone just dumped someone new into your family that you didn't know, um, you know, it might be a bit tense. So I like having this room where I can temporarily shut that door there, have my new chickens in here. They've got that dog house that's behind me that they've got somewhere, you know, to shelter, to sleep and to lay eggs. And then in a couple of weeks, once everything's going well, I will open that door again and the two can meet. And they always in inevitably join up as a flock very fast and then they will actually go and sleep in 
the main chicken house over there. I don't usually have to actively kind of get them in there. That's, you know, that's just what chickens do. So again, even if you didn't have the veggie set up, the berry set up and the fruit set up, I think are wonderful, wonderful for having chickens and integrating them in your garden. And, you know, I don't have to weed this room ever. And, you know, the number of fruit trees in here and the size of it, if I didn't have those chickens, this would be a really big job to weed. And I have a few fruit trees, a dwarf one still, elsewhere on the property. And the amount of weeding I have to do, I swear, I can never keep up with it. So having these girls here to do the weeding for me is really, really invaluable. So it's another one of those synergistic happy relationships because the chickens eat the weeds and they love it and it's greenery and it's healthy for them. And then I don't have to do the weeding. So, you know, it just, there's so many ways you can set up your chicken run or your chicken house that really make the most of what the chickens can contribute. I mean, to think of them as just egg layers is way, way, way too simplistic. There's so many ways they can help you in the garden and so many ways that help you but also help them and give them the best life and you know keep them really healthy which then means that they're healthy they're happy and if you're eating their eggs you know you're getting the benefit of that so i'd highly recommend a fruit room set up like this um so yeah that's that's my four rooms the fruit room the berry room the two annual rooms and any given day one of these doors is open the other two or the other three are closed and it gets rotated between which ones they're in. So they do sometimes get locked out of this fruit room in order for them to, you know, to rest the soil. I might um, build it back up because obviously they kick it out of the garden beds onto the ground, leave it, and then it actually lets some weeds grow or lets, you know, the mint recover, the tansy recover, those plants that are on the ground cover not that they need any recovering at the moment they're pretty fine um but it gives the ground a rest and then you know i'll let the chickens back in and it's more fun for them the last benefit of having chickens in the fruit cage like this is pear and cherry slug i used to find was a huge problem for me with a couple of pears and cherries in here that's a pear right there um since having the chickens and since having them in this room particularly in spring when the pear and cherry slug larvae is coming up out of the ground i find i have a whole lot less of an issue with pear and cherry slug because these girls just um you know eat it as it's coming up so again it's natural pest control healthy for them and you know less less i have to do and also less chemicals or you know, other kind of inputs I need to worry about. So set up your chickens to work in harmony with your garden. Any other questions about my chicken city setup? Let me know and I will film another one of these videos. As I mentioned earlier, Kath and Kim, my two alpacas, have free range around the entire of the chicken coop. I just wanted to show you the girls. Oh, now they're going to walk away from me. Hilarious. Um, they will often kind of troll around Chicken City, just checking out what's going on. And because of them, we don't get any foxes down here. Alpacas are very territorial and foxes are scared of them. So it's a great way to keep alpacas as pets. I love them in and of themselves. They provide excellent pelletized manure for me, which I use in the garden. And thirdly, they protect the chicken from foxes, which in Victoria, um, as I'm sure many other places, is one of the biggest concerns we have. So again, I get most people aren't going to be able to have a chicken coop in the middle of an alpaca paddock. But if you can, I think the system works absolutely brilliantly, actually. Um, there they are. Hey, Kath and Kim. And again, I don't have to worry about the grass in here because these girls keep it short. There's one of their poo piles, which is the magic manure. It's also nice and pelletized, as I said, and it doesn't smell. It's really, it's really easy to handle. There you go. I'm filming shit. So this is the angle looking back over Chicken City. There's my mum down there doing some pruning. As I said, God love her. 
Um, and then, yeah, we've got some brilliant sunshine for Chicken City, which we need for the veggies and fruit. But then we've got this beautiful oak tree, which the alpacas will hang out under on a hot day because, again, they need shade too, just like chickens. With that fleece on them, they can get very hot.